woodworking meets gardening. So I love woodworking. Obviously, this is a woodworking channel, uh, but I also love to garden. And every year I love making new trellises for our yard, uh, for friends and family's yards. They just add a little bit extra. So as opposed to just doing the stakes and string uh, to, to support your peas, your, your green beans, your roses or, or whatever, a nice wooden trellis, it, it lasts and it adds a lot uh, to the look of the yard. And so in this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to make some different different types of trellises. So uh, you got your basic trellis here, not, not too complicated, not too involved. Uh, a hexagonal uh, option, this is great for planters. Uh, this is a really fun one. Uh, there's some other ones that aren't pictured here. We'll walk you through that as well, including, you know, some with some treated wood so they won't fade, the colors won't fade, and using metal, uh, you know, using some chicken wire. Some options, some options for you. So if you are new to woodworking, uh, don't be intimidated. This this really is a doable project. It's a great project for, for beginners. Uh, if you are a woodworker already, uh, there's also, you know, some challenge and maybe some inspiration uh, with, with these trellises. But my very first woodworking project, well, my first project, project with my table saw was a trellis just like this and so um, it doesn't take too much you you will want to have a table saw for this so if you don't have a table saw yet I highly recommend you buy one it, it will start the woodworking itch and uh, you know you'll just go so deep after that uh, but they're relatively affordable I mean it's a, it's a big purchase but you know there are used units or you can find a friend because you need the table saw to just rip down uh, these thin pieces and so this maximizes the lumber that you're gonna buy lumber prices have skyrocketed they've tripled in the last year and so this enables you something like this this is just two two by fours and some some fencing material so you know 25 bucks you know normally this would be way less way less and so great project but yes you do want that table saw and um it's gonna be fun so strap on in and uh, a lot of different styles we'll, we'll sprinkle in some other hacks and some other gardening diy tips at the end uh, but enjoy trellises all right so at the table saw you want to just go ahead and uh, trim off those rounded edges of the uh, two by fours you don't have to but uh, trim them off and then i just set the fence here to to one inch and so i'm getting one inch long pieces uh, just with the two by four, and then uh, once I get all of them cut to uh, to one inch, about, about three pieces uh, per board, uh, I flip it on its end and then uh, do that one inch. So I have a one inch square, and uh, those are gonna be used for the uprights for the trellis. And then I have uh, these off cuts. So these are gonna be used later. Uh, they they could be used for other trellises, uh, but the goal here is you're trying to get these one inch uprights and um, maximizing the wood. As far as the other material, you know, any kind of fencing material works great. This is some cedar here. I just went with some cheaper stuff, some, some pre-stained fur, but uh, whatever you want, whatever you pick, uh, again, you're gonna rip these down into some thin pieces. And so for this one, again, I'm just sticking with one inch and uh, just a, a bunch, a bunch of uh, pieces that I'll use for, for multiple trellises. And so uh, whatever size you want, but you only need to do one cut here, uh, one rip and uh, then you got all your thin pieces. All right, once you have all of your rip cuts done and all your boards have been cut uh, to, to the width that you want, uh, it's time to do the cross cuts. Uh, so you could certainly do this step at the miter saw. Uh, miter saw, if you're able to do the bevel, that's great. You need to do a, a 30 degree bevel uh, for this. So it's a hexagon shape, so six side, uh, so that the angle is 30 degrees. I uh, see, see the blades already been set to 30 degrees. And then you're gonna do some cross cuts. Um, anytime you're using long boards like this, uh, most of the time you just go to the, the miter saw station. But if you don't have one, or that just doesn't work for you, um, when you use your miter gauge, if you don't already have a fancy sled that you've made or an aftermarket one, you just take the standard miter gauge, piece of scrap wood, and then you can just use some screws and you have a longer, a longer support piece. And so as you're running this through, this really long piece has extra support and you're able to stay, you know, further away. It's safer. Um, so that's definitely something to do for this. Super easy. Uh, but this is the most important thing. Uh, it's a huge safety tip. Um, the fence of a table saw is primarily used to make rip cuts. So those long cuts. When you do cross cuts, it's so important that you don't run your board right up against the fence here. Uh, if you do that, once the, the, the board goes through and it's cut, then it gets pinched. 
And that's where you get the kickback. That's where boards can fly. That's where it gets really sketchy. Uh, obviously saw blades are, are super dangerous, but really like one of the most common injuries is kickback. And so every time I use cross cuts, every time I do cross cuts at the table saw, which I do, uh, repeatability is great. You're gonna be cutting a lot of these pieces. Um, I add a little a buffer, right? So this is just a, a quarter inch piece of scrap wood that I just put here on my fence and I clamp. And so when I'm doing my measurements uh, with, you know, at the table saw, I just add an extra quarter inch and I'm gonna get that repeatability. But now when I make my cut and I go through, there's a little gap there. So it doesn't pinch. Now I don't wanna like let everything hang out here. I'll, I'll pull it out, but it, it's just much safer. So definitely a tip, anytime you're doing cross cuts, never just use the fence. I mean, exceptions like plywood, right? If you're just doing plywood and you can put all the, the pressure where it belongs. Uh, but if you're using like a miter gauge and just getting an off cuts, uh, you definitely want one of these um, little, just whatever it is, scrap wood, just measure and account for that in your measurement. So set your blade 30 degree bevel and let's get cutting. All right, there you can see it is 30 degrees. We got the bevel, really important. Uh, make sure you switch that back after you're done. And uh, now we're just gonna go ahead and cut them. So I do recommend doing one uh, test run first. So just do six pieces to begin with. Uh, again, you've seen that stop block, it's, uh, you know, I'm standing to the side, trying to be safe. But then test it out. Is it the size you want? Does it work? Did you get the angle right? Uh, measure it, right? Get a feel for the space. If you're doing a planter like this, uh, just test it out. Is it gonna fit? Does it make sense? And uh, once you got your measurements, once it's locked in, now you can just batch it out and make all your cuts. Uh, but here you can see how this approach, like I talked about earlier, you really can just pile it up in no time. You get that repeatability, uh, but you're doing it safely and um, yeah, ensuring safety. <laughs> okay, so you do wanna cut those uprights, those posts uh, at a bevel, at a 45 degree bevel. And so I'm just using the, this miter gauge again. Uh, again, I still have that stop block for safety. These little pieces, uh, they can fly out. Uh, so again, you see how I'm standing to the side, take it easy. You certainly could cut these at the miter saw, uh, cut the, the 45s, but you just wanna get some uh, nice angles uh, to go into the ground. All right, so once you have all of your uprights uh, cut and then you have all of your uh, 30 degree bevel pieces uh, cut, you're gonna need to make some kind of jig. So a jig is just something that helps you with repeatability. And so uh, I want it to be consistent. So how far down does it go? You decide, but you're gonna be making six of these units and you wanna have all six of them uniform. So when these pieces meet, right? You have, you have a good joint. And so um, I'm just using some scrap plywood. You could certainly use uh, some scrap wood uh, from, from the project. Anything works. Uh, for my purposes, I have a one inch piece. And then uh, I went with two and a quarter inches wide. And then again, you just determine how, how far you want it to go. And once you've made that, uh, you'll just go ahead and then you can uniformly just go there. And that's going to tell you how far out this goes. And it's gonna, so that way you're hidden at the right spot. When you actually attach these to the board, you don't wanna, you wanna give yourself a little bit of room uh, so these uprights don't butt up against each other. And so uh, I'll show you that right now. All right, so when you take your first piece, uh, you do want it flush up at the top. Uh, but this, this little jig here, I just attached these with uh, some pin nails, some, some nails. Once I put it on here, once it rests right in here, I know how far out I want it to come. So I've measured it, so it's just gonna be flush right there. And so here, let's go ahead and put in some nails. So I got it right there. And then let's just put in one. And so now you see how that gives me a little bit of room here. And the reason for that is I'm gonna have a bunch of other units, which are gonna be coming up right here. And then that wood there, um, the other upright is gonna hit right here. And if it's all the way up there, uh, there's just not gonna be room there. So let's go ahead and uh, finish these off. All right, before we get started, I just wanna talk about nails real quick. So um, I'm using uh, one and a quarter inch nails. And so you can go with stainless steel nails um, as opposed to just what you get at your home center, uh, just some, some galvanized. Uh, these do have a tendency to have uh, metal marks, right? So once you put in the nails, you might get some streaks there. Um, so if that's a big issue for you, uh, you know, upgrade to the stainless. I'll just be using just the standard ones, which is just fine. Um, so again, I'm just using an 18 gauge brad nailer here. 
All right, so using those spacers really does help uh, positioning your blocks just where you want it and uh, getting that repeatability. Uh, again, you're gonna be making six of these frames, uh, six frames to form the hexagon. And so you really want uh, everything to line up perfectly. And um, just the time to make a, a jig or a spacer like this really helps. Um, so for nail guns, if you're new to nail guns, uh, I like to use the one with the compressor. Uh, there's a lot of other options uh, that I can attach with the compressor, but you certainly could get one that's battery powered uh, if you don't have a nail gun yet. Uh, nail guns are awesome. All right, assembly time. So I'm using some clamps uh, just to kind of attach the top and bottom just to line it up. And uh, using that spacer, you'll see that everything is aligned properly. Um, so at this point, it is, uh, you know, anytime you're using a nail gun, it's important to account for where your fingers are and the direction of the nailer. But really here, uh, as you're going through, just kind of be aware of the angle you're going into the other piece and, uh, and, and try and not get any blowout. Uh, it, it really does work well here. But um, again, I'm just using those one and a quarter inch nails. And uh, the nails on their own do actually form a pretty good hold. It's not fine woodworking. This isn't going to be perfect, uh, but you just kind of uh, piece it together. All right, so you can see at this point, it is actually pretty sturdy. Uh, it, it's not done at this point. Uh, for me, I like to add these, these cross braces in the middle just to give a lot more structure. It's going to make it a lot stronger, but especially how I use it for, for climbing uh, for, for sweet peas or if you're doing other types of climbers, uh, you do want to add the center support, so I'll show you that uh, shortly. However, if you are, you know, maybe making a smaller one or something for like tomatoes where you want all of that space in the middle, um, I'd recommend taking a pneumatic stapler and then just going on the ends just to, to make that joint a little bit stronger. It's strong enough, um, especially for what it's used for. Uh, however, you know, I, I do recommend adding the supports, but you could get by without it. Uh, just would fortify the ends, maybe throw on some staples. Uh, there, but just again the staples they might leave some of those metal streaks So that's just something to take into consideration, but for me I'm gonna add some supports uh, So some more of this wood just across so some across some across it just is gonna add more uh, For all those vines uh, to latch on to to keep climbing so uh, choices for this you could just keep doing more of that fancy material or uh, those those uh, pieces from the 2 by 4 we ripped earlier, uh, you already have those, and that's about 3 eighths of an inch. So those would offer some good supports across. So uh, that way you're making use of that 2 by 4 and <laughs> maximizing uh, all of its use. So whatever you pick here, cut some strips, measure, and uh, add them on in. So go ahead and take uh, your pieces, take your tape measure, and just get a feel for where you want it positioned. And then uh, just measure it out and then uh, cut, cut them to length. I'm using the miter saw here to cut multiple at the same time. You could certainly cut these uh, with cross cuts at the table saw as well. Uh, but go ahead and cut your pieces and then assemble. All right, so I cut my pieces and I cut some at, you know, for me it was 19 and a half inches. And then I cut some shorter. Right, and so what I'm gonna do on this is I'm gonna attach two up top, and then I'm gonna go underneath right here to kind of still have, you know, kind of some square perpendicular lines. You could certainly just have them all the same length. And when you bring them in, you could have it like this, where it's on the underside. It's just a little bit diagonal, that totally works. You could just cut them all the same length. Uh, but for me, I'm just doing perpendicular, so. You have two on the top of a board, and then you'll have two uh, that you'll go underneath. And so you'll do that for each of the rows. Uh, so just giving yourself plenty of room uh, for those vines to grow through. Uh, but again, you just go with whatever aesthetic, with whatever uh, preference you have. So that's how I did it. Measure, cut, go. All right, so for this step, I do recommend the one inch nails. Uh, as you're adding these interior pieces, uh, there is the chance, especially on those angled ones, for it to, to blow out. Uh, but again, it, just depending on what measurements you use, just account for uh, the length of your nail. Uh, but they go down pretty easily. Uh, the ones down the middle, pretty straightforward as you see here. Uh, the ones on the underside a little tricky, so you just wanna be really careful where you have your fingers. Uh, you just add in one, one nail, and then you can hit another uh, at an angle coming down in. Uh, but again, they, they attach really, really easily and uh, add some more structure and it looks pretty cool, but this just gives a lot of spots uh, for the vines to latch onto, uh, especially for climbing flowers. Uh, that, that's how I primarily use this. So 
uh, but it adds a lot of structure and it's a, it's a sturdy, beautiful unit. All right, there you have it. Um, it is done, it is sturdy, right? It's, uh, it's gonna hold up, it's a beautiful trellis. Obviously you can scale it up to whatever size you want. Uh, this is one I made four years ago. So this is what it looks like fully in the elements. I live in Washington state, so a lot of weather, a lot of rain. Uh, and you know what, it's still, it, it could have lasted a little bit longer if I took better care of it. Uh, particularly the stakes at the bottom. Um, what goes directly in the soil, uh, if you just add some paint to that, it, it should prolong the life. Um, I, you know, I never power wash this or anything like that. So you certainly could paint this uh, or stain it if you wanted to. Personally, I like the look and for, you know, two two by fours, uh, granted two by fours don't cost what they used to, uh, and, and just some fencing material, uh, you can make one pretty uh, affordably and then, uh, you know, get a good four years or so, probably longer, uh, depending on your climate. Uh, but this is one style of trellis. Uh, stay tuned, I got a couple others uh, to show. It won't be the full tutorial with all the steps, uh, but just some inspiration for some other designs. Uh, you know, one including metal, uh, all sorts of designs. So uh, take a look, stay tuned, check it out, and uh, hopefully uh, you get your gardening on uh, with a little bit of woodworking. So here's some more. So starting off, uh, like with any trellis project, you're gonna just rip down your stock. And so again, I'm using some two by fours here and I'm just cutting them down to size, but instead of one inch squares, uh, these ended up being one inch by one and a half inch, whatever you want, you just want a sturdy post. And uh, then you need to cut those bevels uh, for the bottom for it to go into the ground. You could do it on the table saw uh, like we did earlier, or you can do it at the miter saw like this. Uh, but especially for, for this unit that really does need to get into the ground, uh, you wanna make sure you got that angle. Uh, this is the same footage from earlier. Again, you're just gonna rip down uh, whatever cedar or you know fencing material you want uh, for, for the, the horizontal pieces and then uh, cut those to size. So for me, these were six foot uh, fence posts, uh, fence panels, and so I just uh, cut them in right about in half, so just under three feet uh, for, for uniformity. Uh, again, cutting it here at the miter saw, you can cut it wherever. And uh, once you got all your pieces cut, time to assemble. Uh, so using spacers, awesome. So I'm using the same spacer I made earlier uh, for the measurements in between, but I also have another piece there just to account for how far uh, off it goes, just to center my posts. Uh, so again, having those, you know, story sticks or having, you know, those, those pieces of wood uh, that just give you that uniformity uh, really does help, uh, makes the project turn out and it just makes it look that much nicer. Uh, so that spacer works great. My spacer that I use is about eight inches tall. Um, if, if that matters to you, and then that they're about 11 inches off uh, from the center post, um, if you're curious. And then uh, taking some more of those pieces, again, go to those one inch nails at this part, uh, just going into the fence material, it, it'll shoot out if you go too long. But if this is pretty straightforward, you just add, add your lines and you got a pretty standard basic uh, trellis and you can stop here you could certainly stop here or you can kind of futz around with it add some different things and, and take a look and be like hmm uh, what more uh, elements do I want to add what kind of interest and so uh, it's pretty fun all right so you can stare at it analyze add in these extra pieces here uh, add some pieces for contrast or you can go with just you know a standard rectangle and that looks great that works great uh, you just decide on function and form and all that good stuff uh, but this is your basic trellis so just using a pin nail uh, those brad nails uh, and, and, and you got yourself a trellis. You could use screws. Uh, if you choose to use screws and not use a nail gun, uh, make sure you pre-drill, uh, otherwise your wood's gonna split. Uh, so next up, we have another style of trellis. This one uses some pre-treated wood and chicken wire, uh, so it's, not, it's never gonna fade over time, uh, but it uses pocket holes. Uh, so just wanna show you what pocket holes can do using their, the exterior screws. You can actually do some pretty awesome outdoor builds uh, using pocket holes. So here are some of the projects I've done uh, using pocket holes, just to give you a feel, and then we'll jump into this uh, last style of trellis. So just a couple quick projects. Uh, this is a planter bench uh, I made a couple years ago. Again, all pocket holes uh, for assembly. Pretty fun build here. Uh, you could also make a, a potting or a planting bench. So for the framing, uh, the construction, especially for those weird angles, uh, then you can kind of frame it out and add in some more of that uh, material. Just some more gardening tips, some more ideas 
Uh, but pocket holes, using a pocket hole jig really does help. I can make fun projects. Uh, last is uh, this these planters with corrugated metal. I actually do have a video. Uh, check out the card, check out the link in the description for, for how to make these full tutorial on YouTube. Uh, but another fun style in the garden. But to this last trellis, uh, here it is. So chicken wire and using some pre-treated uh, two by twos. Uh, you're gonna go ahead and, and make a beautiful trellis that lasts. So this is the pocket hole jig I use, whether using Craig, Armor Tool, or, or any, any pocket hole jig. You just dr drill a lot of these holes uh, that go at the angle. And uh, then you can go ahead and assemble. So these units are, uh, I made for the garden at my school. So I'm actually here in my classroom, uh, fifth grade teacher in my room, just making some before students come. And, and so you're just drilling in these screws in at the side. You know, you could do nails, I guess, and other things. It's just not gonna be as strong. Uh, these, these screws do work really well and that pre-drilling really helps. So you're just kind of attaching a frame. You can see I use the little spacers for the uniformity yet again. Uh, but you're just gonna make a bunch of these frames. Um, so here is, is one of those spacers right there just to make sure I have everything right at the correct angle. Here you can see I'm using that screw. So these blue exterior screws, at least for Craig, uh, there's, there's other ones, they just last a little bit longer. Uh, but you can see how it goes in at that angle. All right, here's the chicken wire. So uh, just using a pneumatic stapler. So again, that air compressor is a great option. Um, and then you can just go ahead and just throw in a bunch of staples just to get it latched on in. Uh, what's great about this, this approach is both with the metal and the pre-treated wood, it's never gonna fade and the colors are always there. Uh, then just using some snips, go ahead and snip it off, clean it up and um, you got your panels. So here is assembly time. So uh, this style has two different panels, uh, which just makes it a little bit stronger. It's not gonna tip, excuse me, not tip as easily uh, as far as just a, a one, uh, but also it gets you more yield. You can grow on either side of it. And so I'm just using some more, some more of these uh, pieces that have pocket holes and I'm just drilling on the underside uh, to get it through. Uh, when you're attaching pieces, it's always good to have good pressure and if you're able to clamp it, uh, that much better. Uh, but yeah, pretty fun. Flip it on over, just get these spacers in between. You can see that the feet at the bottom aren't super long. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, some different options for, for the measurements you do if you go with this approach. But uh, this is just a great unit. It's, it's last lasted for, for several years here at my school and uh, really adds a lot of support and it's beautiful. Uh, but it's beautiful and it lasts. Uh, but here you can see uh, in these raised beds, uh, you can also make just a, a one-off like here. This, this one here uh, doesn't have the double side. Uh, just supporting it gets a little bit trickier, uh, but that's another option. All right, so if you decide to do this, uh, this style where you have the two sides, um, it's just a little bit trickier because you have four posts. And so I didn't make them super long because just thinking about how would I pound them in the ground and all of that. Um, so I ended up just adding um, some rebar stakes and then just you know got some little attachments from the, the hardware store uh, so they don't tip over. Uh, for where these were positioned, that was sufficient. Uh, because of the wind direction, but where you're at you might you know have to do something different or just make it longer on the bottom and then just uh, uh, Do a bevel at the bottom. So it, it works as a stake, but uh, they work well and uh, it, it doubles it doubles the uh, space uh, for your your climbers so this is definitely a great option. And again, if you don't have a table saw, this is a great option because you don't have to do any of those rip cuts. All right, uh, one more, uh, just a quick, quick style uh, here. Uh, again, you can do any style. I mean, you, you got the idea by now of, of the different ways, but this one uses those same two by two uprights and then just a bunch of other scrap rips. And so uh, this is more of like a, a glorified tomato cage that has like spots for multiple tomatoes or you could use this to support dahlias or peppers. And so basically you're just making two frames. I mean, it's pretty straightforward here. Uh, you're, you're just using these uh, pressure treated or pre-treated cherry tone uh, uprights that are you know two by twos. And then you're just adding, all of those are, are two by four rips. Uh, so just adding it in, using spacers like before, uh, just to kind of make, uh, you know, like a corral of sorts for all your plants. So uh, this works really well if you want to just have a bunch of peppers all together, a bunch of tomatoes, uh, just one more fun design. Okay, last little tip, uh, tomatoes. Maximizing your space, uh, this is actually an option for apartments too. 
We used these styles for years. Uh, back when we had an apartment, we would have it just on our balcony. Uh, but at home, it's just a great way to uh, add space. So you just take a bucket, cut a hole in the bottom. I'm using a jigsaw here, however you want to cut it. Uh, drill some holes for drainage. Uh, it is important that it is a food grade container. You know, just thinking about growing your plants in something with plastics that's not so great. Um, it's not a great idea. Uh, then take some weed block. So this is going to keep the dirt from falling out those holes, but it's also going to let the water go through. This is an option. I don't know if it's absolutely necessary, but I added it. It's just a sponge, and that's just going to hold on to the water just to uh, help it not dry out. Again, I don't know if it's necessary. It's just something I did. Uh, this is kind of tricky, but you want to take a small seedling, so a small tomato plant, and just kind of wedge uh, the, the roots uh, in between that sponge and then the, the weed block over it. So it's a little awkward, but you'll figure it out, and then just really carefully uh, sneak it through that hole. And so uh, whatever size hole you want, it's just got to be big enough to, to fit your seedling through. Uh, you might snap a few branches, but it's resilient. It'll, it'll hold off just fine. And then just go ahead and finish it uh, with your soil. Um, you know, consider maybe a potting soil or something that's going to retain the moisture uh, really well. And uh, just fill it up, you know, not all the way, but most of the way. And then uh, go ahead and drill a hole uh, however you plan on watering it. If you're going to do a drip line like I have here or if you're going to use like an extension rod. But then you just hang it and you just hang your buckets. And then over time, they just keep growing and they get super happy. Um, this is just such a great way to maximize your space. Um, it also, it just, it looks cool. And, you know, some people say they do better this way. I don't know about that necessarily, uh, but it's just great for us. We, uh, we have a really nice uh, full sun hot spot here. And so uh, the tomatoes get really healthy and happy. So another option, another fun little DIY tip. But gardening, I mean, this is what it's all about. It's all these colors and seeing all those little trellises that are supporting and helping the plants grow uh, just adds to the beauty and the enjoyment of your yard. Um, gets you a good yield. So whatever you're growing, uh, whether it's vegetables or just some beautiful sweet peas like this on that hexagon trellis, uh, it's just fun. So trellises are a blast. <laughs> you can get really creative, make epic towers like this. Uh, for you know your taller climbers like beans and such uh, or like this one my very first project I ever made this one's you know five five and a half years old but trellises woodworking and gardening all right so a little trellis action hopefully you enjoyed that hopefully you found it helpful um, if you're interested in seeing more stuff like this please consider subscribing uh, normally it's you know we're using some choice hardwoods uh, you know furniture wood art uh, unique cutting boards and serveware, uh, but we definitely do some DIY projects and, and some, some beginner projects as well. So anyway, check it out uh, to, to see more uh, for sure. Ch check out all of those little goodies, you know, down in the description. Instagram, you can see more sawdust shenanigans on a, on a more regular basis. So anyway, hopefully you're able to do some gardening this year and, uh, you know, make something, grow something, and maybe bring a little wood uh, out into the garden. Take care, everyone.